Hello, everybody out there in Twitch land. It is Wednesday. I'm a little early because I'm actually going to be doing something a little different to start off with. I'm hoping it'll only take me about 15 minutes uh, and so that at my real time, 1030, I'll actually start with the Starfinder stuff. So what I'm doing is I do take uh, a couple of my campaigns have a break. Um, a lot of my streaming is only a couple hours, so we don't take a break. But I do have a couple three-hour campaigns where we take a break. Um, so I want to have an art to put up. I was going to go into um, my version. I have pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com is what I use for my uh my version of Photoshop, um, but I'm so used to Fancy Grounds, it's just going to be easier to build this image in Fancy Grounds, and then uh, do a screen share, I mean a, a clip, and throw it over. So, um, what I'm doing is I, t I found a bunch of free clocks, images, on the interwebs, and now i am got my Fancy Grounds file location open <laughs> going into images and then i'm going to make a new folder here it is new folder and do clock stuff and i'm going to take all of these clocky things throw it into here And then, so I can access it, so now it's here to my Fancy Ground stuff. So, in Fancy Ground, you then open up your ass at. And you click on here where it says Refresh Folder Assets. Click it. You'll see on here, folder assets refreshed. Then you go to images. And you right click. Uh, I'm going to put it in uncategorized. It's fine. Right click, create item, close. So now I have my blank canvas. Uh, speaking of blank canvas, we'll minimize this for now. That is what we're going to be doing here in a few moments when we're done with our clockiness. So now I go to my ass at, go to my images, and under data, data. We will see the clock stuff. There we go. Here's all our images. These are all the ones we're going to use. So my intent is to throw this puppy in the back. Boof. So we go to our layers. We have this selected. And we're just going to increase the size to, oh, let's say 50. 50 by 50. Boom. There you go. So now we have this big clock. Next, and now we're just going to add these clocks. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 clocks to add to it. Um, why isn't there 12? Eh, because I stopped at 11. Maybe I should grab one more and make it 12, huh? All right, so as we add these, we're just pulling and dragging them. They're going to be all different sizes. So instead, I'm just going to drop it here first. Boom. Three and a half by three and a half. I'm going to say I'm going to want every one to be, this is 50. So I'm going to say I'm going to want everyone to be five, 10%. Let's see what it looks like if it's five by five. Got the stamp on there. 
boom. Um, I'm going to move it down. Boom. Next. Five. Boom. One of my favorites because it's a skew. Why isn't it? There we go. I'm going to stick this at, mid, at noon or 12. Um, actually, I'm going to, I like this guy a lot, so I'm going to throw him, make him bigger up in, in here in the middle. And as we make him big, you're like, dude, you can't, you're covering up the other stuff. And I'll be like, dude, relax. I know what I'm doing, man. Um, so I want to check something. Is this really a ping? Let's see. It is not a PNG. Okay, so. That answers that question. So we're gonna we are gonna have to bring this down a little bit. I uh, will bring it to there. We don't want to cover up the white lines, the, the black lines up here, and then we put it, drop it down. Boink. There you go. All right, control Z. We delete him. We bring him back up. All right, what is going on here, folks? Okay, so this guy is the one we're deleting. Uh, I just deleted the wrong ones. There we go. All right, boom. Dropping this kid lit one in. And we're just dropping them in, changing the, the size to five by five. Slide that over a little bit, boom. Atomic wow. Hero Squad, good day to you, sir. Good day, I say good day. All right, this is five by eight. So what we're doing is we're just making a little graphic for when I go on break. Um, one of my campaigns, uh, we do take a quick break. And I don't like having my BRB screen up there because it's not really a Be Right Back instance. It's a 10. So... And it's easier for me because I'm much more familiar with Fancy Grounds than I am Pixlr, which is my version of the Photoshop, just to do it in Fancy Grounds. So that is why we are doing it this way. So we're just playing around with ideas, throwing them up here. I don't have an even number or the same number of clocks. You know, I don't have 12 clocks plus one in the middle and stuff. So 
we're gonna plant. Just playing with it, seeing what's going on. See how how this looks, and uh, I actually like that right where it is. Boom. Control Z. Asphalt 9, very cool. All right, I thought I killed you, dude. All right, so we'll go to select and then delete, delete, okay. All right, so there we go, we have that. Do I have any other? Let's go to all, and let's see what happens if I type in clock. I do not have any other. See if I have a sundial. Just checking my images to see if I have anything else. I don't like this particular hole, but um, how about this one? I'll just throw a sun in there. I'll throw the sun in there. Why would it throw it all the way in the bottom? That's weird. There we go. All right, so that works. People who do the math will realize there's not actually 12 clocks there or 12 images there. Let me move him over a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. We'll take you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back to layer select, delete. Move you down just a smidge to cover up the numbers. Make it a smidge bigger. There we go. All right, cool, close enough. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add text to it. Um, so now that we're done, we're gonna zoom in just a bit more. A zoom, -y, zoom, -y, zoom. I said a zoom, zoom, zoom. We will go to play mode, so. There we are. Don't want the dice in there. And then what we'll do is we take a snippy snip. It's got time on its hands. I love it. That is awesome. <laughs> One could almost say too much time on its hands. That is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, all right, boom.
Kaboom. See, and now I have my image. Save it, and then I'll add it to my streaming software. Add text saying, you know, we'll be back in 10, you know, a certain time or 10 minutes, or I'll figure out how I'm going to do it. I don't like the, we'll be back in five minutes, because you don't know when the five minutes started. And if I'm here, and it's been five seconds since you left, I don't want to wait. If you're going to be back in 10 seconds, I'll just wait. So the, I don't like the this ambivalent. I'll probably do refer to the chat to see when we come back. In my streaming, put it in my streaming folder, put it in my, just my streaming folder, and this will be time on my hands. Boom. Okay. And did you notice the background? The numbers are askew. I love that. Okay. And now that I have all that stuff finished, I can then go into my computer, shift, delete, maybe, is it not wanting to delete? That's weird. Okay. There it is on my computer. Working for reels. Cool. Alright, so let's get, get to the star finding this. A um, couple minutes late, but uh, it was what I thought it would take. 10, 15 minutes. Uh, anytime I'm working with images in the fancy grounds, it is definitely a rabbit hole to need to be aware of because I personally can spend way too much time messing with maps. All right, so what are we doing today? We're messing with maps. Um, first of all, we're going to change the decal in the background. This is the Dawn of Flame campaign. So I thought, oh, cool, a cool hand would work, and it does. Um, but I'm going to change it. It's been one or two weeks since we've done this, so background decal, click. See if we can find something interesting. So you can t use any image from your assets as the background detail. Um, But if we click decal, then it pulls up certain ones from the art packs and such that are, and that's how I found the star to begin with. Uh, let's see, boom, let's see what that looks like. That's cool. Not gonna spend a lot of time, boom. A little black holiness. All right, so what we're doing today is we have this meltdown. Uh, the crew had gone and tracked down some information they're looking for, tracked it to one location, which then sent them here. So that's why we are at this location. First of all, I don't like this dark grid. We'll go ahead and turn the light off. Okay. Turn the lighting back on for a moment. Let's go ahead and turn the grid down. You go here to grid, go here to tint. We can go here to, we'll make it 70. There we go. It's, it's, it doesn't make it quite as bright. And then when you turn the lighting on, under play mode, turn, uh, well, the lighting is off. All right, so now we're going to go to our lighting, and we're going to give us give ourselves a an ambient light. So 
go here to ambient lighting. They are on the surface of the sun. So we're going to go ahead and go here, clickety clickety. We want it to be like a bright orangey. There we go. Okay, now let's turn it on. There we go. So it gives us orange hue to everything. And then we're going to enable the mask, add mask. And we're going to hide area. So we're going to hide the inside of the building. Because the ambient lighting from the sun does not shine inside the building. And then you hold Alt. And I'm just clicking, left clicking, and dragging. And it's just hiding the mask of the ambient lighting from the areas I'm selecting. Blaze hand, yep. Hold Alt, click, drawer, and then we move over here. Hold Alt, and a pretty steady hand that time. Boom. All right, so there we go. So there's our ambient lighting outside, and that's what. So that's what what did look like. And now it's what it looks like now. And then without the lighting, boom. All right, so now let's go to our line of sight. Okay. All right, so they did something that's really annoying. And I will explain. So they thought they were being clever, putting a line of sight like this. Problem is, the players, well, that still might work. All right, so let me finish my, my sentence, and I'll, we'll check with a token. Um, if you put the line of sight out beyond the line of what it is that's blocking the line of sight, then the players, their vision just stops and they don't know what's blocking their vision. So typically, I will put the line of sight inside the wall a little bit so they see the drawing of the wall and they know, oh, it's a wall that's stopping my sight. So let's take a look and see what it actually looks like from a player's standpoint with the tokens. Combat tracker. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use Beaker because Beaker is a pet or companion rather and doesn't really run around much. All right, so we're going to put him on. Okay, so let's see. So as you see, you can't tell. It's just black. It's just a black line. See this? What is this? And it's just the same even when he goes inside, hold shift to move him into the room. Uh, he doesn't have a light on him, so we'll give him a light. I'll give him a light spell. What does a beacon do? Let's see. We'll find out. Um, token light. Beacon. Select him and add light. 
Okay, I don't know what a beacon does. Anyway, so again, as he's walking around, if we go back to the to play mode. As he's walking around, it's, the vision just cuts off. What is that? All right, so we got to fix the line of sight. So in this particular case, the door is fine, but that's really pretty much the only thing. Well, and these, all these are fine. He set them up as terrain. So if he jumps onto these cars, for example, he can then see all around it. But if he's on a floor, he can't. So that's perfect. The terrain is, these things are set up correctly for, as terrain. Um, the doors, all right, so the doors, doors are good. All of the walls, inside and out, are jacked. So, good news is, this is usually not the case. Uh, the people who do, you know, different people convert different modules and adventure paths and things. So, um, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So, I'll, with a couple of different ways of doing it. Um, sometimes it's easier just to redo whole, the whole thing. In this particular case, for the outside parts, the out, outer bits here, um, I, for, and there's not anything that stops the line of sight from going away from here. So we'll start with that. We go to wall. I want it on this layer, because if you don't say anything, it'll just make a new layer with of just walls. And we're going to go out here. Just make a big old square so that the line of sight doesn't go beyond that. And then now we're going to drop down into here. And all we're going to do is just tweak these a little bit. Go to layer select. Oops, sorry. No, we're in line of sight. We go to here to select. Uh, and we're just going to take and move these in. So that as these buildings are blocking their line of sight, they will be able to see just what is blocking the line of sight. They're not really interacting with these buildings anyway. I'm not going to have an encounter and stuff out here. So I'm actually changing my mind. I'm going to move them. Move it here. So they'll see this whole veranda and then the outside. There we go. Because like I said, we're not going to be interacting with these buildings. So why not let them see it? So now, as Beaker is here, um, we go to play mode, we go to enable, there you go. So he, they at least see, oh, hey, cool, there's a cool little building there. Whereas before, it was that. Back to our line of sight. Back to our start. Stop with a viewer play line of sight. Boom. All right, and same thing. I'm just going to move it over. Go ahead and get rid of him. Play mode. Click on the token. Right click on the token. Delete. Delete. Sometimes I forget to show you what I'm doing as I do it. So 
So there you go. So now the players can see this building. Boom. This one is actually done with the way I, I have been fixing it. So he did one building this way, but he didn't do the other ones, or she. Um, I don't care enough to look up to see who converted it. You know, I don't want to throw shade. I don't remember any other map in here having this issue before. Every map is different anyway. You know, you have different locations, different things going on. Um, so, like I said, I don't want to throw shade. I don't want to make a big deal of it. And a lot of people don't care. Is it game breaking? No. See, and this these two buildings don't even have it. All these buildings over here, one, two, three. Why don't they have it? I don't know. This is an outdoor, like a patio looking thing, but this building doesn't have anything. Why? Why? I don't understand. And you could actually make these terrain as well. So I'll go ahead and show you, for example. You can do this as terrain, going to go to line, because if they get on top of the building, they will then be able to see out from it. If you do line of sight like the other ones are, they won't be able to see if they get on top of the building, around the building. So we'll just make the terrain real quick. Double click or hit escape when you're done. I could change to rectangle. And it would be a little faster, but right here, rectangle. Oops, whoa, 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 control Z. Um, but I don't care. All right, boom, again, there's a round tool you can use to make round objects but especially because this is a uh, not really round it's it's a partial circle i'm just going to keep it the way it is all right so let's move this in go back to select i'm going to bring this guy all the way down to here so they can see a little bit more of the art. Alrighty, here, boom. Again, I'm gonna bring it down so they can see some of these uh, I'm actually just going to select and remove. So, we talked about this the other day. Remove maintains the lines. So if I remove it, it'll, these two points will still be connected. If I delete it, it will get rid of the two lines that it's connected to. So I want to remove it. Show off some of these pipes. We talked about the number of occluders, these white points, the other day as well. Um, to me, this is just too many and it's unnecessary. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I have select. Just draw a line a box around all these occluders and delete. Delete. Um, and and 
it's weird that they cut off this symbol right in the middle of the image. I wonder if there was a connected, like, multi-image. I had the book. I could look. But um, let's take a look and see how it is in the book. Now I'm curious. Here it is, yeah. So cryogenerics and the meltdown share the page. Cool. So that's why that northern compass is cut in half. Alright, personally, I may have taken the time to uh, leave the other half of the compass there, just sort of jutting out on the map. But hey, you do you, man, you do you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here just because maybe all this stuff is ground level. It only raises up a couple feet, this whole structure here. Why not preserve some of the art, you know? Okay, so now we're still in select mode. We're going to go through. We're just going to get rid of these walls. Delete. You can also use the delete key on your keyboard. Now I want to be careful because I don't want to get rid of the terrain. These things, I don't know if that's necessary. No, I'm not going to leave those there. That doesn't make any sense. It's the back of a chair. Chair backs are going to be either do the whole chair or... I don't know. I don't know what the logic is. Maybe they're not able to see because of the very back, but you can see over the rest of the chair. I guess that's the only thing I can think of, but... I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Blaze hand. Let's throw, throw up another quote, shall we? It's been a minute. Quote, 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 quote. There we go. I'm just doing it carefully because I don't want to get rid of these, the terrain, and redo all the work on a, on these terrain. Again, these are beds. I don't know that I would have put that. A table's low, depending on how high or low the table is. But yet this desk he didn't put on as a, you know, the desk with a computer you would think would be higher than the, well, some food processors probably what that is, like a microwave, would be higher than the beds. But who knows? Who knows, man? I didn't do it, so I don't know the answers to these questions. All right, so we zoom in. We grab these three and hit delete. Boom. This is how we do it. And this is how we do it. All right. Holy crap. See, he went through all that work for these bathrooms. I mean, kudos to him for doing all the work, but man. And I've been there. You just get in the zone. Good feeling when you look back on it and say, Yeah, look at that. It's all done. Boom. Now, Control Z. Okay, so let's do this manually then. Click, click. Shift, click. Delete.
There we go. We're getting rid of some of these. Boom, boom, boom. Complete. There we go. All right. We're going to zoom in. Is there a differentiation between? No, there's not. Ooh, this is going to be tough. All right. Let's see. I'm going to go and hope I can just get this remove. Ah, there we go. And we'll delete. And then we'll go back to here. We'll get rid of all these. Delete. And we only have to replace one door. So click on a door. Um, make sure it's on the right map. Do a rectangle. Yoink. There we go. And there's a door again. All right. I'm not going to worry about these as much. Well, screw it. I am going to worry about it. Uh, it's just going to be faster. Oops. Here. <laughs> I just made a giant door. Uh, to select them all, delete it, and then just add the doors. Because adding the doors are really fast. You just go... Boom. And you've got your door. So this is pretty simple. And now I'll just show you since I'm here and it's very small. I don't want, I won't save me from having to zoom in later. Whoa, 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 what in the world is going on? Control Z. Click. No, stop. It's free forming. There we go. Click. Escape. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Hold control. Click. Click. Escape. Yeah. So control Z. So all oh, it's right now here. That's what it is. Magnetic snap. Boom. We don't want magnetic snap on. I was like, there's a setting for that. And I don't remember what it was. There's magnetic snap. Boom. Boom. You can overlap a little bit. It's better to overlap a little than to not do it correctly because then they will have the tiny one pixel gaps and it gets really annoying. Escape. All right, so there you go. And then we'll do these walls here since we're here. Escape to end it. There you go. All right, so, so those walls are done real quick. Um, and since we're in the wall mode, we'll go ahead and boom, boom, escape. Boom, boom, escape. Just throwing in a couple extra in the wall. So you'll notice that I'm drawing these walls in between the two. And what that does is the players then will be able to see the art and will know instead of just having their line of sight stop They'll actually see, oh, hey, there's a wall there. All right, so boom. Where else are, do, are we missing? What else are we missing? Let's go over here. And go back to our select mode. Boom. Delete. Okay. Last one. Let's zoom out. Make sure. All right. So now we have to do is add our line, uh, add our walls. 
uh, pretty quick. So let's go to the line. So now at this point, I can just use the arrow key. Boom, boom. That way the line is perfectly straight. I don't have to worry about it. And so just, this is a good example of what I was talking about. See a tiny little space where if you're zooming back out, it, you can't really tell it's there. They would be able to see it. And that's not actually not even a tiny space. That's a pretty big space. As they're walking through, they would have this huge line of sight ray of cone that they can see um, through the gap there. And it's really annoying when you notice it. All right, so we're going to do back out. Give ourselves a little extra, extra, extra. Now, when you do use the arrow key, it does it by one grid mark. So keep that in mind. Because if you start in the middle of a grid mark, like if I started here, it would jump it up off the line. And when I start it here, you'll notice, see how it's slightly above the grid line. So just keep that in mind. Not a huge deal. It's very easily able to adjust. You just come back down. Click. So using the arrow keys makes everything straight. Something I prefer doing. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm going to zoom in oh, to show you. Um, I'm going to click here on the door, make sure it's right. And then I'm just going to come back a little bit. Instead of hitting escape and starting it all over, I'll just boom. It's all good, man. It's all good. Zoom back out. Let's blindly go where I can't see we go I'm going to go ahead and finish this bottom part first boom boom and again there's a tiny gap there so Fix it. Boom. Escape. Zoom back out. Almost done. Left click. So if you have any questions on how any of this works, um, if you want to see an example of the pixel gap, oops, control Z. And why it's important to make sure you get all the way up to the line. I can show you. If you have any particular things you have questions about with line of sight, lighting, any of that stuff, just leave a comment below. And I'll be happy to go over it in more detail. Or answer your specific questions you might have. And there you go. So now we have our line of sight redrawn one more time. I'll show you why I did went through all that work. Um, go to play mode, go to what the view player sees. See, so now you can see the walls. As he's walking around, he's like, oh, there's a wall there. 
when I go through the door, open. Oh, he doesn't have light on him. So we'll go light, token, token light, beacon. So he, see, and now inside as well. As he's moving around, oops, I'll go back to play mode. There we go. See his, see the walls? And that's the point. You can see the walls. You could not before. Oops, it looks like we missed a wall here. All right. Well, that's one of the reasons why I check. But you'll notice here, see, you can see the walls. That's what I want. I want to be able to see the walls. All right, so we, we missed one here. Easy enough to fix. Here we go. Back to play mode. And now we have our wall again. We have our wall in place a door open the door come in see he's got it so weirdly set up with the beds i might change the beds i mean i guess if you have a tiny character they can jump in behind it and be hidden but i don't know we'll see then again it works, it's not the end of the world. All right, so see all these little tiny lines? That's what I was talking about. So right here, there is a gap. That is exactly what I was referring to because as you zoom in, there it is, there's the gap. All right, so we will go like this. Boink, and then boink. There we go. Now there is no gap. There's another gap here. Look at that, see? Well, there's two gaps, so we'll gap, close this one, and we'll close this one. There we go. So when I have the time, I do like to do what I'm doing, moving the uh, token around. And it will catch those type of gaps and stuff. Open the door. And you're like, hey, what's in? Oh, it's a bathroom. All these little stalls. See? That's how it works. Got to remember to close all these doors, because otherwise they will be open when we come back and do something else. See? There we go. Very cool. Shift to move them into the other room. Check in the outside walls. Oh, there we go. See it? Do you see the gap? This is a really small one. Line of sight. Yep, that's like what? Five pixels? Two pixels? I don't know. Very small. All right, looks like we are gap free. So our line of sight is done now for this map. There is no light at all in here, which is a little odd. So now we go to the second thing we're gonna be doing today. Um, only have about 10 minutes left. I don't wanna spend a whole lot more time today because um, I don't wanna be too long. 
what we're going to be doing now is we're going to take this. We will minimize it. Actually, we're going to get rid of the what the player sees. We're going to get rid of the lighting for the moment. Um, so that we can just be looking at the map. Uh, and we're going to do a quick, let's go to the storyline. So I have these pinned for me. We'll actually even close this. You go to the story entries here, find it, and you can click, drag it from here down into these hot bars. Um, the hotkeys, you have 12, 1 through 12, as you can see. And then if you hold down Shift, you have another 12. C is another 12. Alt is another 12. So that's 48 already. Alt is another 12, 48. Then if you hold Control Alt, Shift Alt, Shift Control, and Shift Control Alt gives you a second set of 48. So you have 96 different hot hotkeys you can use. Um, and I use probably 12 to 15. I have certain ones I always have conditions. I always link down there so I can easily pull up. Somebody's stunned. What does it mean? Boom. Restrained. Grappled. Boom. Look them up. Blinded, confused. That's all in my conditions down here. Identify what it takes to identify creatures. Anyway, a lot of things you can link. Maps, images, character sheets, NPCs, even the stuff I work with. So I usually have shadow on these. So I can uh, just pull up the shade and add shading to a certain location like this map um, I might before we play add some shade you know shadows underneath here uh, shadows around here just to break up the look a little bit anyway point is I like it so it says smoke and chemicals fumes fill the air and sting the eyes in the street, we're talking about out here right now. This is the, the uh, actually, this is just outside the general thing. Um, all right, so now we're going here. This is the entrance. Massive door, 20 feet wide, nearly as tall. And normal door nearby is painted with meltdown recycling over here. Sliding panel in the door is positioned to re reveal the word closed. Calm and reading power panel has a flashing red light indicating it's off. All right, so because I can, we're going to zoom in here. We're going to add a flashing red light. Go to lighting. And we're going to come here to add light. So we're going to go to behavior, flash. Go to color, red, OK. Right now it's bright for 25 feet. We don't want bright for 25 feet. We want it bright for 5 feet. And it's going to fall off. And then dim for 10 feet. Uh, I'm going to say 15 feet. It's going to be, I want them to see my cool light. Um, fall off, I don't honestly remember what that does. So we're going to just say 10 and 20. Because I don't know what it does. And then we're going to click right next to the door. There it is. So now, and then we have the speed, flash. All right, so now let's turn on the lighting. Back to our lighting. All 
All right, why isn't it working? Let's see, select light, add light, flash. All right, so why isn't it working? Let's see. That shouldn't matter, enable lighting. Add light, all right, so let's try it again. Actually, no, I'm gonna go here to select light, click him. Oh, it is on, okay, it's just hard to see because of the other light. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and, so you can see it just here. It doesn't seem to be flashing yet. So let's change the color. Make it really, no, see, all right. So because of my ambient light, turn that off. Now we can see our light. So there's our flashing light. Speed it up a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna change the color. We've got the color selection lit. Um, here, I'm going to try using my eyedropper, adding it this dark red. Boom. There we go. All right, so now we have a red flashing light. Um, and by the way, because I put it on this side of the wall, it doesn't shine on the inside of the wall. Okay, um, so now let's turn our ambient light back on. So it's there. And if it's just, so that's what it looks like. So you got this flashing red light. So let's change the ambient lighting a little bit. Ambient lighting, turn it off. Ah, oh, well, so for now, we'll leave it. I understand what's happening. And it's realistic because in the bright light of the sun, you may not be able to see it, but that's okay. I know it's there, and if I if you look for it, you can see. Wait, wait. Um, you can. I would also, if I didn't have the ambient lighting, add these lights here. I don't know why these lights would be here because, and I could you could add lights to every single one of these. A really dim light like five feet but uh they're on the surface of the sun so i would argue those wouldn't even exist because you don't need it unless they're just there for like decoration they're like neon lights maybe that's why those are there but uh anyway moving on got the flashing red light Now we're gonna to go to the next page. Where is our secret door, by the way? He did not have the secret door drawn in there. Interesting, okay, so. We need to add a secret door. 
shelves and tables display a chaotic mix of gently used parts. And then, then the junkyard, which is area three. Go back to our play mode so we can see what these links are. Shop, junkyard. Shop is where we were, just where, right? Yes. Okay, so the shop's down here. Junkyard's up here. Barrels, broken vehicles, starship components, garbage. A massive open pit foundry occupies north wall. A raised office complex overlooks the work floor. There's a ladder. Goes up 10 feet, okay. To a balcony. All right, this is not listed as, okay, this whole, this is a mistake. So I'm glad I looked. Let's go back to here. This should definitely be a terrain because this is 10 feet high, the ladder and then 10 feet high. So go to terrain. Make sure we're on line. The line tool. Click, click, click this one. I'm not worried about. Click, escape. Um, so there we go. So now they can't see up here because this is a balcony and here's the ladder. All right, good to go. All right, um, engineering check. Piles here stand eight feet tall, unsteady. Okay, so that's why these are blocked off. Um, there's a creature. Bunks. Now we're in the bunkhouse up here. Bunks line in northern walls, round table, two computer workstations down here. Three doors lead to the west, and a kitchenette unit. Yep, it's exactly what I said it was, like a microwave. All right, here's a picture of Mama Thrush. There she is. Nikesti. All right, so they talk, they talk, they talk. Bathrooms. And then this is her room. Debris and half-finished products clutter the bedroom. Yep. Small pieces of grease and old food, tools, parts, old meals, pile on every surface other than a rolling chair, unmade bed, and a tiny table. On the table, under the simple lamp, is a big book bound in a dark cover. All right, so again, I'm going to go ahead and add a light to the lamp. So I'll go here to light. We go to, it says lights, so we'll go ahead and put that there. We go to add light. We go to none. We go to preset. We're going to go to, I'll make it a lantern. Sure, 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 sure. And then we go. Click. So now she has a light in her room. It should be, I think it went with my chain, my change, but I'm gonna say 10 feet and then uh, 20 feet of bright, of dim light. Um, actually, so we need to go click Q, there we go, change. So we have to actually select the one I want to change to change that light, 20, boom, all right. So because this is a occluder that casts a shadow, um, I'm actually going to get rid of the bed because 
or at the occluders on the bed because I don't want it to block the line of sight. So we're going to go ahead and delete it. Boom. Same thing with this. I'm, I'm just going to get rid of all these. There we go. So now the light works. So I don't see any lights drawn in a junk shop. I don't see any lights on the walls, you know, here. There's probably halogen lights on top. So I'm going to add a light to this room. I'm going to say there are, you know, the equivalent of lights, uh, whatever the hell they're called, the uh, here we go. So we got lighting, we make sure we're on the lighting level. And we're going to say this is a preset of a, oh, let's do a beacon. I like the beacon. What is going on? Did it think I had that selected? This is a lantern. Okay, try that again. So we got it selected. 10, I'm gonna double the thing because it's a lamp. Boom, and now we're gonna go to add light, all right. Dang it. <laughs> ah, you're killing me, folks. Select them both, delete. Okay. Add light. Slide over the map. Go down to beacon. And we're going to add a beacon right in the middle. Boom. And one over here. Boom. All right. So this is a brightly lit room. We're then going to select, we're going to move him over. There we go. So the point to this is just to light the room. I don't care because they won't be able to see where the light's coming from. And I'm, I am just going to get rid of this. There we go. All right, so this room is well lit. This room is not. Um, I'll make the toilet lit as well. As well. Did I even put a wall there? I did not. I'm not going to worry about putting a wall there. Well, yeah, well. Yeah, well. It's a divider. All right, so now we go back to our lights. Make sure we're in the right spot. We're just going to put a lantern this time. Actually, we're going to put a torch. Torch is higher. And we're going to stick it right here. Add light. None. Torch. None. Boom. Back to our play mode, shut the door. There we go. All right, so now we've got a light. Good to go. So these three rooms are lit. This room is not. I will say there is a light in here, so if they want to turn on the lights, ah, I add another lighting layer. Oh well, that's fine. Here's an ambient light. So I'm going to make a folder, call this folder Bright Lights, Big Cities. All right, so we're going to take all of this. All 
and throw it into the folder. Close the folder. All right. All right, so it is 11.30. Time for me to get moving at 1.30. Um, for those of you on the other coast. So I need to get rolling, but there we go. We looked at line of sight. We looked at stuff on, in the maps. Um, sometimes it'll say, like, he, like here, it said there are, there's debris piled up, but it's not on the map. It's just an empty room. So I would then go in with some fancy ground assets and add the debris, things like that. So that's why I do that. Um, the encounters, everything is already done, so I don't really have to worry about placing the monsters and things like that, because that's all done, uh, and, and all, all these pre-written stuff. Um, my homebrew campaign, I have to do everything, but for these pre-written ones, they're already there, and they are, even to my strict guidelines, they're still playable. So if you don't have time to do all these things that we did today, for example, then you're okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Most of these pre-written campaigns are playable. Um, there might be a minor error here and there, like that balcony not being set up right. But for the most part, it's fine. And so what? The balcony was there. The players can see it. So what? Who cares? And it's not the end of the world. Um, it's still playable. Um, if there's no line of sight, well, then that's not really playable. you got to add line of sight. But with the pre-written modules, that's all taken care of for you. Fancy Grounds does a great job of making sure the people who, who do these at least do make it usable. So, And when it's not, everybody complains, and it gets fixed. So Fancy Grounds is awesome. Atomic Hero Squad is awesome. Check him out. Uh when on in the mornings if you want to check this out we play on sunday night from 5 30 to 8 8 30 to 11 depending on which coast you're on you can also check them out on youtube uh just search svenster 77 and you will see you will find me and all my playlists. This one in particular is Dawn of Flame. If you want to catch up and see what they're what they're up to. Uh, every other week we also play Dead Sons on Sunday night Starfinder live play. We're in the middle of a big Starship battle. Um, I was thinking of going over Starship Combat. So because Starship Combat in uh, Starfinder is something that a lot of people don't like. And I think 90% of it is ignorance. They just don't know. They see it. They see it's a whole new concept. It's a whole new combat system. And they just freeze up and say, oh, it's too much. I don't like it. Uh, because when you actually get into it and you actually play it, after, say, two rounds, you and your players know what's going on. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, it is a little much for a DM. Well, the game master because he's running every other ship that's out there and especially if there's more than one ship there's a lot going on but it is a lot of fun i really enjoy it and fantasy grounds makes it so easy it is so well done in fantasy grounds now they just made some more recent changes and made it even better and easier to run fantasy ground uh, fantasy, uh combat starship combat so if it's something you guys are curious about, I was thinking about doing a little tutorial on how in Fantasy Grounds to do it. I did a couple streams ago. I did how to build a ship in Fantasy Grounds. So uh, if that's something that interests you, leave a comment below, um, and I'll definitely do that. So thank you again for hanging out with me. Uh, I got to run. I will see you guys tomorrow night for my late night campaign check my schedule down below 
like, subscribe, all that stuff. Check out Atomic Hero Squad in the mornings. And whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day.